Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're here for the first time just plain old welcome. <laughs> Hello I am Patty. I go by Patty Magnets everywhere online and this YouTube channel is called My Handmade Lifestyle and I call it that because we do a variety of handmade crafts here and I say we because you are always invited to participate as well. I. So if you are new to the channel, very special welcome. I hope that you enjoy the program today and that you will subscribe before you leave. Be sure that you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any updates and like the video and tell me what your favorite handmade craft is because we do a little bit of everything here. So today is the 22nd of December almost Christmas and this is going to be another one of these like short and sweet uh, vlogmasy podcasty <laughs> a little bit of everything video the smorgasbord of videos I guess you could call it and I don't know why that keeps flash oh I know what it is I have a sparkly uh, bird feeder out front in the uh, in the tree and the wind is blowing it and the uh, sun is glinting uh, on the sparkly birdhouse. So that's what that reflection is you see behind me. Uh, and the great thing about that is it means the sun is out, which I'm so darn happy about. It has been dreary and raining like for months here. I, I don't ever remember such a damp season and I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I. I'm really ready for sunshine. I love cool temperatures and bright sunshine. It's wonderful for walking. The light really helps my mood. I get a little depressed when it's dark all the time, so this is wonderful. You might also notice, if you have been on the channel for a bit, uh, that uh, this is a little bit different. Yes, I'm wearing new glasses. I finally got new glasses. I'm super excited. I'm looking at myself now. These are so cool. Um, okay, the glasses. Let me tell you. I got these on zlul.com. This is not sponsored. This is just my experience. Um, so it's my first time trying these mail order glasses. And uh, I have to tell you, I was concerned about doing that. Uh, but the truth of the matter is the eye doctor wants so much money for the glasses and I just was like, I, I can't do it. Okay, these, I love them. Of course the downside is, you know, you don't get to try your frames on. That is the, I think the worst part of ordering your glasses online. You don't, you don't know what they're gonna look like. So, um, I do have a gigantic head, so I have to go for the, the large sized frames and there's always less to choose from. And honestly, I would rather this be a little more squared down than so round, but you know what? They were $65 delivered. Um, I have the non-glare uh, front on them. I love them. These are the reading only prescription. I think I mentioned that. The eye doctor would have been over 300 bucks. Now, I did like the frames, they had a whole lot, but $65 versus 300 and something, that's a, that's a huge difference. Uh, so I like these. I would even consider having a second pair that I can wear when I'm doing videos because it's kind of fun to have, you know, change your look a little bit. For the uh, it wouldn't be a proper podcast without uh, a little uh, sipping of beverages, and I have a very special mug today. I shared this with you um, in my last video, and uh, I designed this. I do have it on offer in my Etsy shop, and I love this mug. It's so pretty. Mm. also from China. <laughs> it's printed in the US. So the uh, all of the, the print work is done here in, in the U US. I live in the US. I did the design work on it. Uh, 
this, but the, the mug itself comes in from China. They did have Made in America mugs for a while, but I don't think people were buying them, so uh, we're all on this version now. But you know what? It's very nice, I have to say. It's it's good quality, and I think these are pretty nice quality, so anyway, yeah, there's the mug. <laughs> I will link to it uh, below if you're interested. Uh, in the last video, I was sharing with you my hat project, and um, I'll show you what I've got done on it. It's not a, it's not a lot, so I have this this much done this time. Basically, uh, I'm at the point now where I'm ready to. Uh, what I'll do is, uh, you'll go through. I'll go through and pick out the. Provisional cast on, and then I'll uh, thread the stitches onto uh, a smaller uh, circular needle. Uh, so it's just just so like as a placeholder, just so it's easy to get the stitches onto a needle. And then you fold it up like so. And then uh, what you'll do is uh, connect your stitches, and you do it basically as like um, a knit two together, all the way around. And that's that'll be my brim. And I think I think it's enough of a brim. Let's try it on. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's plenty. So I'll make sure I like all of the stitches, and they're all even where I want them. Because I really had kind of a hassle on the last one in terms of um, I I got the. The brim connected on the, the first version, the yarn spaghetti video, and then I didn't like some of the stitches down here and tried to uh, drop it down and fix them and I couldn't. So anyway, it's, this looks pretty good. So tonight I'm going to um, go ahead and do the, the um, get the ends connected and then I can start knitting the body of the hat. So basically what will be, um, from this edge up uh, seven inches, and then you go into your uh, your decreasing, and here we got. So um, hopefully, I'll have it done. My goal is to have it finished on uh, Christmas Eve, so that I can do a Christmas Eve cast on. I don't know what that's going to be yet. You'll just have to uh, have to be watching. But uh, this uh, this is uh, Rowan Cocoon. It's from Stash, and I'm knitting on uh, 10 and a half size US uh, Chow Goo uh, Red Lace Circular Needles, uh, 40 inch cable on uh, Magic Loop. So that's a lot of description, isn't it? Uh, and this is what the yarn looks like, and it's beautiful. It's super nice. It's wonderful to work with. And uh, I think think this skein will be enough to finish the hat, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, for the pom-pom, I'm going to try something totally different, which is, um, I like yarn pom-poms, and I have um, made those, and I have my own special technique for making yarn pom-poms, which I'll link to up here. Um, probably going to refresh that video in the new year, but that's still a good video. You can watch it. Um, but I'm going to try using this. And I don't know how it looks on camera, but in real life, it's beautiful. Look at that. So um, it's supposed to be wolf. It's not real. I mean, it's fake fur. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use real fur. But um, isn't that gorgeous? So I really want to make my own yarn pom-pom. I don't know why. There's plenty of beautiful ones you can buy. I just, you know, it's the, uh, the sickness of the DIY thing. You just want to make all your own stuff. And so um, I went out and found this. And we have uh, been really kind of deprived in terms of good faux furs here. But the Joanne uh, fabric... Uh, we got, um, uh, it's in the same shopping center. It's basically the same store, but they like moved into a new space and it's like the new style of store, which is so much nicer. Oh my gosh. 
uh, I actually visited the store. It's been a few months ago. I did a video on that and I'll link here so you can see what my Joanne, uh, and they call it Joanne Crafts, I think now I know, or Joanne Fabrics. I don't know. Joanne. It's up here. <laughs> um, this I'm going to make into the, uh, the pom pom. I think, oh yeah, wouldn't that be pretty? I hope. Let me tell you something. This stuff is not cheap. Um, it's $35 a yard, but I got it 60% off plus another 20% off with the coupon. Uh, still, it's a lot of money, but um, it's really pretty. And you know what I'd like to try? I would like to try to make like a, um, like a vest, right? Wouldn't that be? I guess it would have to go this way. cool if I had a fur vest. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Right now I just want to try making um, some pom-poms and see what that's like. I understand that it's a huge, huge freaking mess. So we're going to find out. Uh, it'll be an outside job. But uh, yeah, this will go with this. And I think that's going to be a beautiful hat. So, uh, with luck, that will be on my head for Christmas Day when I go out for my walk. We'll see. I've been getting into uh, some simple embroidery and I have shared a few of those projects with you. And I wanna share this one because I have it uh, all finished up in its little hoop let me fix the bow a little bit here. And uh, I think it's really cute. I need to hang it. But here it is. Isn't that pretty? Super proud of that. Um, so I did this as part of the uh, Craftsy slash Blueprint, whatever that is now, um, uh, the Embroidery Startup Library. And I mean, you know, like this isn't perfect, but I'm okay about that. You know, curve is hard, uh, but I still think it came out really cute. And so, um, their part of the pattern is this and the, the doily heart. And then I did my own freeform daisies here, and then I did the daisy stitch here, and then I did these cute little pieces that look like little um, blooming flowers. Put that up so you can see it. And that's a particular stitch. And then all the way around I did um, uh, the starburst and uh, French knots. And I had such a nice time making this and I finally got it into its finished tube. And here's how I did the back. So I did a um, pinch pleat finger pleating, I think is what they called it, finger pleating, and then just um, stitched it. And then you can see my work, which <laughs> it's not perfect. It's okay. It's like, it's the first main thing I've made. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Let's get that bit out of the way. So I want to hang that. Um, I think it's pretty. And uh, this piece, this one I'm really proud of. So uh, this is my newest make show that to you and I did that isn't that pretty and uh, that one uh, the tree was a totally different thing for me to make but it's like everywhere you look right now everybody's doing embroidered trees and I had to get in on that uh, that project action because I love it so much and I bought the pattern I think, it, I think her name is Cozy Blue. I will link over to her shop. And I, I bought um, a pattern PDF. I already had a whole bunch of thread. When the, uh, the Joanne I was mentioning, before they moved into the new store, they did like a major closeout sale in the old store. So I got like oh, a huge, huge pile of embroidery floss for like 20 cents a skein 
so that was a good deal. So I just bought tons of colors. So I had all of this in my stash and the fabric I had in stash and that's like a linen. And then um, here's how I finished this one on the back. So I covered it. Um, I just did like a, um, what do they call it? Not a crimp. The scissors that do the, I, this has been like, this has got to be like a senior moment. And I'm having them a lot at the moment, at this time. Pinking shares. I use pinking shares to cut out the felt. And then, um, so first I did the finger pleating and I sewed all of that. And then I cut out the, um, the felt and then I stitched that on. I just thought it was nicer. This is actually a gift. Um, so I have to get this to the recipient. And uh, I love it. I love it so much. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do one for me because I really like it. But these trees, they're everywhere online right now. And I've got uh, tons of these patterns on my um, Pinterest. So, um, yeah. And it's, let me move in so you hopefully can see that. There are um, two colors of, um, of thread in the, uh, in the leaves. And I did take some better photos of it, so I'll, I will try uh, inserting some of those while we're going through this. So that's that's what I have to share with you as far as projects go this time. Um, I want to talk about a couple other things. Um, last night, my good friend and I went. Uh, we have an annual Christmas time tradition where uh, we go out to eat, we have a nice dinner, and it was fabulous. Um, we went to a new place called Cultivated Libations. <laughs> this is terrible. I can't remember anything. I think it was Cultivated Libations. I'll look it up. I'll put that down here. Uh, it was amazing. If you come to Virginia Beach, you definitely want to go there. It's locally owned. They were fantastic. Uh, for the appetizer, we had, they called them squash rings. So instead of onion rings, it was squash. Oh my gosh, they were fantastic. Um, and then I had, uh, I had a BLT. Uh, I was on um, challah bread uh, with uh, pimento cheese. It was fantastic. So um, had a really good meal. And then we drive around together and we look at Christmas lights. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, at the end of today's video, uh, insert like a little um, montage of some of the Christmas lights that we drive to see. And um, <laughs> I will let you know that these are uh, like very high-end fancy neighborhoods. I don't live there. <laughs> I live, you know, close enough in the same city, but I don't live in a neighborhood anywhere close to this uh, caliber of home, um, but they're beautiful homes, and I think it's really, really nice that uh, they get together as a community and do all those Christmas lights. Um, the first place where we're walking around, it, it was amazing last night. It was, it was warm here. Well, first of all, it stopped raining, which was great. And it was warm. It was like in the 50s and it was clear. And uh, because we left a little bit early, I think that helped. And we went over and we were able to park on the street over. And um, this area is part of uh, what we call uh, Old Beach. It's been there a long time. It sits um, uh, basically at the foot of the Cavalier Hotel, which was built in the 20s. That place is spectacular. They recently um, remodeled the property and it's stunning. I have not been inside of it, uh, but I think, I think there's a place where you can go have lunch. So <laughs> I'll have to uh, see if I have some nicer clothes that I can still fit into and try to go over there and, and have some lunch because it would be worth dressing up to go into that place. Uh, but anyway, this is the very nice part of, of the city. And uh, the homes, um, 
it's like this one particular street and everybody on the street decorates and I mean big time decorates and uh, perpendicular to the streets that you drive on it's like um, brick lined um, sidewalks uh, very colonial feeling and they uh, put uh, like a, an archway of lights uh, over these um, walkways and it's just it's magical it really is and in the past when we've driven over there uh, it's it's like a madhouse and you can't get parking for blocks and it takes forever to get up and down the street it was magical last night we got over there we uh, parked easily it was warm um, and we just walked and really enjoyed it so I shot a little video of that to share and uh, I'm going to insert that at the end of the video uh, today so uh, the first part will be um, down around the beach and uh, then we rode through uh, the really fancy neighborhood um, that's a uh, few miles over uh, not on the ocean front the first uh, neighborhoods on the ocean front um, beautiful homes I don't know who these people are <laughs> I don't know who they are or how they can afford these million dollar homes but good on them because they're stunning so uh, yeah that's our Christmas annual Christmas um, thing that we do together activity and um, when we're writing I'm, I brought the music and so this is like one of my favorite I think this is probably my absolute favorite Christmas recording. So we listened to that. I highly recommend it. Uh, we also listened to um, this one. And this is kind of old now. I really like Jewel. I have seen Jewel in concert and she is amazing. What a singer. Um, so her Christmas CD is quite nice. And then we listened to this one. It's really not Christmas music, and um, so my friend, he's uh, <laughs> he's he's a little older than I am. Um, I, I love him. Okay, he's like family to me, but he is like um, he's a little bit stodgy. So uh, this was way outside of his box. So um, yeah, because the first song is from Kelly Clarkson. Uh, it says Kelly Clarkson, Dido, Maroon 5, Nora Jones, and I mean, he just wasn't having any part of it because, you know, that was not Christmas music. It has to be, you know, uh, Joy to the World, uh, yeah, uh, Joy to the World, and um, uh, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, and this type of thing, or it's not Christmas music. So that was too far outside of his box. So I had to. Um, stop playing that one and I put the jewel on and she has some like super traditional music on there so um, that placated him he was fine with it um, and then after that I put the the Vince Lombardi on and we went with the jazz because I just love that that Charlie Brown Christmas is so good so uh, I wish I could use that for the music bed looking at the Christmas lights but I can't so you'll just uh, have to uh, picture it in your mind. <laughs> the last thing that I would like to uh, share with you before I uh, sign off on this part of the video is I want to show you um, where the uh, paperweights are. The paperweights are the uh, flowers that I um, did the uh, as bulbs, where you force bulbs, and um, they last appeared in my uh, Christmas houseplant tour. I'll link up here can see them and I uh, force paperweights every year now I learned how to do that in uh, master gardener training I have a video on how you too can force paperweights at home a link uh, it's very easy it's unbelievably easy um, it has to be paperweight bulbs it doesn't work that way with all bulbs um, different flower bulbs have different um, steps and uh, needs and things to get them to do that uh, but paper weights are very easy you literally just uh, put the bulb to where the bottom of it is touching water and it will start growing roots and you'll get flowers it is 
foolproof. So highly recommend that. And they smell really nice and they're very pretty. So we'll head out to the uh, kitchen and living room area and I'll just give you a quick little update on uh, the paperweights and then we'll uh, finish off today's video with the Christmas lights. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go take a look at the flowers. Here are the plants that I keep in the kitchen window in the back and look at how tall these flowers are. <sighs> Holy mackerel. So you can see how pretty they are. Look at that. Let me back up. And you can see how they're just in that little shallow tray. Uh, it has gotten so that I'm having to put water in the tray uh, every day. And you can just look if I move it, you can see the water. And so there's all their roots. And um, that's all you have to do. The downside to these is they do get tall and then they get top heavy. And um, so I have these little um, like holder things sort of wedged in there to just to give them some support. And I'm not sure why these are flopping over, but they should come back. Anyway, that's the ones here in the kitchen. And you can just kind of just give you just a quick little glimpse at all the rest of my plants. I love them so much. <laughs> uh, this one over here, let me show you that in the martini glass. Um, isn't that pretty? Thinking about showing you how to do that in a video. But anyway, today let's just look at the, the paper whites. I mean, look how tall that is. Isn't that nuts? Okay, let's go in here. And then this is the uh, this is the window here in the, the living room. And I mean, gosh, these things are so tall. They're like, <laughs> I bet they're like two feet tall at least. Maybe two and a half. I mean, they really shot up. They're so pretty though. I mean, come over here. And this is the amaryllis and um, this is actually the second bloom. Let me back up where you can really see that. Uh, the first uh, bloom I showed you in the Christmas houseplant tour video and it had four blooms on it. Well that has already come and gone. I just cut it back. This is the second stalk of flowers and um, I'm pretty sure that's going to bloom at least partially by Christmas. So today is Saturday, so it's in, yeah, I will have a bloom. That'll probably open on Christmas Day, which I think that's kind of magical. And um, these are the paper whites. They actually do better in these um, taller vase things, but I think it's because you have more of a place or a way for these holders to grab onto things. And this little one was not doing well. And if you look back at that last video, I wasn't sure it was going to do anything. But um, lo and behold, here it comes. So that's going to bloom as well. But um, they smell so good. And let me just back up so you can really see them. Isn't that something? So yeah, that's uh, that's the paperweights. They just all of a sudden. Once they get going, they just take off 